Brandy Buck, Gamgee, Baggins, Hobbits. Hobbits are often described based on their love of gardening, nature, and peacefulness, with a history of mostly keeping to themselves. On the other hand, various hobbits are some of the most pivotal and important figures in Middle-earth history. While their overall legacy is much shorter compared to that of the other free peoples of Middle-earth, we will still discuss their history and notable figures. The exact origin of hobbits is unclear, and very little is known of their early history. In fact, when hobbits were first discovered, they had already been around for generations, but had lost their own genealogical details. What we do know is that early in the Third Age, they lived in the valley to the east of the Misty Mountains, and supposedly were friendly with the Northmen living in the area. In those times, there were three different tribes of hobbits, the Harfoots, the Stoors, and the Fallowhides. The Stoors had facial hair and an affinity for water and swimming. The Fallowhides were adventurous and outgoing, and the Harfoots had most of the traits that we associate with hobbits. For reasons unknown, although possibly having to do with Sauron's growing power at the time in the nearby Mirkwood Forest, the hobbit tribes began moving west. Some of the Stoors stayed behind on the banks of the river, and eventually Gollum would be born of this tribe. The rest of the hobbits continued westward, crossing the Misty Mountains, and began settling in various areas in northwestern Middle-earth. The settlement of Bree was founded around this time, and eventually a large group of hobbits were granted permission to settle the area that would become the Shire. Beyond the Shire, very few hobbit villages would remain toward the end of the Third Age. Originally, the hobbits in the Shire swore allegiance to the kings of Arnor, but after the kingdom of Arnor was split, the hobbits began electing their own leaders, but the office was more of a formality than anything. The Shire became a quiet place of farming, festivals, and smoking pipeweed that very few outsiders ever visited. The hobbits of the Shire knew very little of what was going on in the world at large, and were suspicious of any outsiders that walked their lands. Although the Harfoots they descended from preferred to live in hillside and holes, only poor or rich hobbits lived in hobbit holes in the Shire. Poor hobbit holes were basic burrows with perhaps only a single window, whereas rich hobbit holes were expansive, warm, and comfortable. Most Shire hobbits lived in large, low buildings. Hobbits were great lovers of food, often having six or seven meals a day if they could get them, and were particularly fond of simple foods such as mushrooms. They also had a love of drinking and socializing with one another, particularly discussing hobbit genealogies. The hobbits of the Shire also developed the tradition of giving away birthday gifts rather than receiving them. The average lifespan of hobbits was 100 years, although some hobbits lived as old as 130. Their average height was 3.5 feet, which caused the Dunedain to refer to them as halflings, being half their height. In later days, they became shorter, usually less than three feet tall. They had short legs, slightly pointed ears, and furry feet with leathery soles. They dressed in bright colors, and almost never wore shoes. Although hobbits were rarely drawn to violence, they possessed uncanny skill with missile weapons, from slings to bows. Notable hobbits include Bull Roarer Took, distinguished by his great height of four foot five, making him capable of riding a horse. It is said that during a goblin invasion of the Shire, Bullroarer personally killed the goblin leader by taking his head off with a club. Supposedly, the head flew through the air for 100 yards before landing in a rabbit hole, ending the battle and inventing the game of golf at the same time. It is likely that this is an embellishment, however. Bilbo Baggins, of course, is one of the most well-known hobbits, having gained fame for his adventures with the dwarves in reclaiming the kingdom of Erebor. Prior to his adventure, Bilbo was known as a respectable hobbit with an aversion to anything out of the ordinary. However, as Bilbo had blood in him from the adventurous Took family, he was rather restless, and after his adventure, he was regarded much less fondly. During the quest for Erebor, Bilbo took the One Ring from Gollum in the Misty Mountains, and held on to it for many years, extending his life. During his retirement, he wrote a book about his adventure with the dwarves, and attended the Council of Elrond, offering to take the One Ring to Mount Doom. After the War of the Ring ended, Bilbo sailed west with Frodo, Gandalf, Galadriel, and Elrond to Valinor. 
Bilbo had also adopted his cousin, Frodo Baggins, after Frodo's parents were killed in a boating accident, and Frodo would go on to be the most famous of all hobbits. After Bilbo left the One Ring and the Shire behind, Frodo became the master of Bag End for 17 years, before Gandalf returned with the revelation that Bilbo's ring was actually Sauron's One Ring. Frodo secretly left the Shire for his own safety, and was joined in the conspiracy by Samwise Gamgee, Peregrine Took, Meriadoc Brandybuck, and Fatty Bolger. Sam, Pippin, and Merry would later join Frodo as part of the Fellowship of the Ring, and each would earn their own fame for their actions during the War of the Ring. During the Fourth Age, Frodo left Sam Bag End, and the book containing both Bilbo and Frodo's adventures. Sam would end up having 13 children, and was elected Mayor of the Shire for seven consecutive seven-year terms. After his wife died, he was allowed to sail west to Valinor for being a ring-bearer briefly. During the War of the Ring, Pippin had become a Knight of Gondor, and he and Merry had become over four and a half feet tall from drinking the waters of the Ents. Pippin became a Thane of the Shire, and Merry became Master of Buckland, but both ended up traveling to Gondor in their later years, and were laid to rest next to Aragorn. As hobbits seem to be an offshoot or relative of the race of men, it is likely that they also possess the gift of men from Eru Iluvatar, but little is said of the hobbits' belief in an afterlife. Hobbits are perhaps the most inspiring characters within Tolkien's works, being pivotal figures in both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Hobbits at times showcase unparalleled courage and endurance during times of danger and terror. Hobbits, perhaps even more so than dwarves, are the best examples of being small of stature, but strong of heart.